All right, algebra students, I've got three examples for you involving the skill of solving equations. Let's take a look at the first one. Find T when three quarters times the quantity of 12 T plus 32 equals 42. A lot of students panic here at the side of the fraction. This is a very GED math typical example. It's not actually that hard of algebra, but they know that you guys kind of tense up and panic with that fraction. And so it's often included. Remember that we can have our calculator deal with this fraction. All we need are our lovely algebra skills. We can see that T is not alone. There's a lot of numbers hanging out with T. There's a 32, a 12, and a three quarters. I would need to get rid of all of three of those in order to solve this equation to get T alone. The first number that I'm concerned about is the three quarters because it's outside of the grouping. Groups we save till last when we're solving. So we're gonna take care of anything outside of a grouping first. Well, there's two ways to deal with this three quarters. You can either do the implied math here. Turns out this is something we can do. We can take three quarters and multiply through that grouping if you know the skill of distribution. But that's not the only way you can deal with that three quarters. You can also get rid of it by doing the opposite. So we always have that choice in algebra. It's like, can we simplify? Can we do the implied math? Well, do it if you want to. If not, and it's an equation, we can get rid of it, that kind of solving process. So we can do it either way. Now, since I haven't technically taught you distribution yet, I'm going to teach the way now where I just get rid of the three quarters using opposites. But I know that there's some of you who have learned to multiply through a grouping already. You know, you're in the advanced class. And so I'll do it that way next. But I'm going to get the same answer either way. So first, let's try by getting rid of the three quarters. Notice what the three quarters is doing with this grouping. That three quarters is shoved up against the parentheses. It's multiplying. So I can get rid of it by dividing by three quarters. And you say, can I do that? I say, you sure can. As long as you keep the left-hand side and the right-hand side equivalent, you can. So notice I divided the entire left-hand side by three quarters. I'm dividing the entire right-hand side by three quarters as well. Looks ugly, but multiplying and dividing by the same number, no matter how ugly it is, cancels out. And so I freed up this grouping. Now I just have 12t plus 32 on that left-hand side. And it's going to be equivalent to whatever I get on the right-hand side. Now, again, you might be mad at me because you might say, Kate, this is disgusting. I, I don't want to divide with fractions, but that's not the skill we're highlighting right now. So let's just do that in our calculator. So 42 divided by, I'll open up a fraction bar and type three quarters and that is 56. It's not just this equation that's getting solved. Your little fraction problem just got solved. Now this is just a nice two-step equation. We can handle this. We work that order of operations backwards when we're solving, of course, and so we can get rid of anything adding or subtracting now that it's been freed out of that grouping. Adding 32 and subtracting 32 cancel, and so all that's left on my left-hand side is that 12t. And that's going to be equivalent to whatever I get on this side. And man, it's so easy to make silly little subtraction errors when you're doing challenging algebra. So I'm just going to do it in my calculator, you guys. I know I can subtract by hand, you guys. I, I promise I know how to do it. I'll even make you a video if you want one. <laughs> I also know that I only have so much brain power when I'm taking the test. Like I have limited energy to devote. And so I want to devote my energy to the things the calculator can't do, the algebra. 56 minus 32, the calculator says it's 24. Now T is not alone. It's being multiplied by 12. So I will do the opposite. I will divide away the 12. Multiplying by 12 and dividing by 12 are inverses. They cancel. I'll just have a single solitary T, one T left there, or just T. And then there's the math to do. And again, I know that 24 divided by 12 is two, you guys, but I've seen so many people glitch out when they take the test and tell me that's 12. People who know perfectly well. So I'm just going to type it in my calculator and I get T is equal to two. The first way we did it, our first step was getting rid of that three quarter multiplier. But you know, we could have, if we know how to, done that math, passed out that three quarters. Let me show you what I mean. 
So this three quarters is shoved up against this grouping, which means it's multiplying by a grouping. And we have this lovely thing called the distributive property, which tells us that even if we can't do the math inside of the grouping, we can still move on and do the multiplication by passing it out. And so what I'll end up doing is taking the three quarters and let me arrow out, multiplying it by the 12t. So three quarters times 12 is nine, but it wasn't just 12, it was 12t, so I'll have 9t. And that's gonna be adding with three quarters of 32. So let's do that. Three quarters, arrow out of the fraction, times 32, and I get 24. And of course that equals 42. And now you might say, well, Kate, this gave me a different equation. Yeah, different equation, but look, I'll get the same solution. All right, take away anything adding or subtracting. 24 and 24 cancel on the left, leaving me with just 9t. And on the right-hand side, 42 minus 24, 18. Of course, t is not alone. This time I have a nine hanging out. I'll divide that multiplying nine away. Those are inverses, so they'll cancel. Multiplying and dividing by nine are inverses. So t is alone and 18 divided by nine is two. All right, so, so in algebra, you often have two choices and that messes with students' heads. But if there's some simplifying, some forwards math you know how to do, you're free to do it. Like you can multiply with that three quarters, pass it out. The problem said multiply, we could multiply. But it's an equation. So you could also get rid of it, solve it using opposites or inverses. I don't care which one you do. You're going to get the same solution as long as you can keep track of what you're doing. Do you know what you're doing? <laughs> are you simplifying or are you solving? Are you on one side or are you on two sides? Are you obeying the operation or are you disobeying the operation? Are you working the order of operations forwards or are you working it backwards? Those are all the distinctions between simplifying and solving. So know what you're doing. Know what your goal is <laughs> and you'll be fine. Next example, even though it looks harder, is actually way easier. Whew, wipe your brow. <laughs> Let's take a look. Translate the phrase, the product of a number t and negative three is 42 into an equation, then solve. I've never actually seen an example just like this on the test, but I thought I'd mix up some skills because I have seen them use the word product a lot. I see translating expressions a lot, and I see solving equations with negatives a lot. So we're just gonna flex our muscles by testing all three in this example. So first thing, they'd like me to translate this phrase. It's not a phrase. Oh my gosh, I should go back and edit it. It's actually a sentence, huh? But we'll translate this sentence. The product of a number T and negative three is 42. Now, in order to do that, you have to remember product and that's a GED favorite vocabulary word. A product is a multiplication expression or it's simplified what you think of as answer, but the simplified expression. So basically, I'm just writing a multiplication problem. So the product of a number t and negative 3, if I'm saying that, those two things are multiplying. Now, you could write it like this, but that would probably confuse you because that's not how we write about numbers and letters multiplying when we reach algebra. What we end up doing is we just write the coefficient first. That's the number. And then we write the variable second. That's the letter shoved together real tight to say they're multiplying and then we don't even use parentheses. So that says the product of t and negative three is, guys, is just tells me what something's equal to. So it is, and what is it? It's 42. There you go, boom. Negative three t is the same thing as 42. And now this is easy to solve. Uh, well, I should say it's a short process to solve it because it's only a one-step equation. There's only one number to get rid of, the negative three. Uh, the only other trick that might throw you though is how to get rid of it. Really common error to add three to both sides. But that was for the beginning level students, okay? You guys are experienced now. I don't wanna see this error anymore. We're doing algebra, we're not memorizing steps. Okay, we're not just seeing a minus sign and anytime we see a minus sign, we say the opposite of minus is add. We're supposed to be doing the opposite of the operation here. The operation is what this number is doing with T. This number three is not subtracting from T. That's what it looks like when the number three is subtracting from T. This number three is shoved up against T, it's multiplying, or as we said, it's a product with T. This is multiplication. I better know it's multiplication. 
And so the opposite of multiplication is not addition. The opposite of multiplication is division. And now another rookie mistake is just to divide away the three. I, I want to divide by the exact number I want to get rid of. So make sure you divide by negative three. Now, can I do that? I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. Another weird rookie mistake is even those who kept the negative on the left-hand side suddenly drop it on the right-hand side. Don't do it. When you're making changes to an equation, you can make changes, right? You can say, no, I'm not multiplying. I'm dividing instead. As long as you keep the left and the right-hand side equivalent. So you better do the exact same thing on both sides. If one side's negative and one side's positive, you haven't kept them equal. All right. That being said, multiplying by negative three and dividing by negative three are opposites. They cancel T's alone like I wanted. And I will definitely do 42 divided by negative three in my calculator because I don't want to make a silly little division error when I'm doing all the hard work correctly. So I want to do this example with you because this is another place where students would get really psyched out uh, because you guys are over here like, oh my gosh, it's a word problem. It's algebra and it's a fraction all together. And so it must be three times as hard, right? All those things are hard. So this must be three times as hard. Well, this is one of those cases where algebra is going to make both fractions and word problems easier. So Salome is a waitress. She earned $73, $113, $120, and $80 in tips on the four shifts she has worked so far this week. Nice information. Still don't know what I'm doing. Use the equation below. Oh, that's nice. Okay, I'm going to use an equation to find the amount she must earn on her final shift of the week, T. Okay, they're using, telling me to use the equation to find T to average $100 in tips per night this week. And look, guys, it's not even something where I have to put the numbers in. All these numbers they gave me, they already put them in. There's the $100, the 73, the 113, the 120, the 80. It's not even a word problem anymore. It's not, it's not. They surrounded it by a lot of noise, but somebody wrote the equation for you already. So now algebra just made my life easier that I didn't really have to interpret that word problem. All I have to do here is solve this equation. Now, just looking at this equation the way it is, even before we deal with the fact that there's a fraction, I can make this thing simpler by simplifying a part of the expression on the right-hand side. I can't just like type this entire right-hand side expression into my calculator, unfortunately, because there is a letter in it. However, this piece I can do. I might not be able to add all five of those numbers, but I could add up the first four. And that's what I'll do. And I'll do it in my calculator to make this sucker a little simpler. And that's a really good rule of thumb, you guys. If you can make the equation simpler before you start solving, do it. We like easier math. So I see that this entire piece of the expression is the same as 386. And I could just have that adding with T and that'll be over five and it'll equal 100. Hey, that got simpler. And now it's kind of easier to see that this is just a two-step equation I need to solve. It might've looked a little ugly, but it was a two-step equation in disguise. I've got two numbers to get rid of, 386 and five. Now careful, don't do the rookie mistake of taking away 386 first because it's subtracting. I know I taught you to work the order of operations backwards so that anything adding or subtracting goes first, but don't forget what G stands for. That's group. That's exactly why I don't teach you stupid PEMDAs. I teach you Gemma grouping stay till last and the top of a fraction is a group. Leave that group nice and steady. Keep it there. Take away anything outside of the group. I'm going to take away that five. Now, how? By doing the opposite. What is the opposite of dividing by five? You guys, it's multiplying by five. I'm going to multiply the entire right-hand side by five. And you say, can I do that? Well, sure. As long as you do it to both sides. Let me see you enclose the entire left-hand side in parentheses. Multiply that by five as well. Now let's see what our new equivalent equation will be after making that change. Five times a hundred, of course, is just five hundreds. 
Multiplying by five and dividing by five cancel. I have freed up that grouping. Now I just have 386 plus T and now I can subtract away that 386 from both sides and 500 minus 386. Again, I'm doing it in my calculator because I don't want to make a silly subtraction with zero error. And I get 114. And on this side, 386 minus 386 is nothing. It zeros out. And so I just have nothing plus T as zero plus T or just T. If you add nothing with T, you have T. And we can see how much she needs to earn in tips. She needs to earn $114 in tips if she wants to average $100 a night. Just straight algebra skills. Not even that tricky. So don't get psyched out, guys. I seriously need you, when you see a fraction, when you see a word problem, I want you to get some attitude. I, I do. I want you to be like, no, you can't psych me out. I am so sick of you trying to scare me with fractions. I am so sick of you trying to scare me with word problems. You can't scare me. I'm good at algebra. All right. That's your attitude. That's how you go forward and you conquer this test.